Hi, in this video, we'll look at entropy from a slightly different perspective from how your textbook looks at it. So in your textbook, entropy is just uh, introduced, thrown at you, as change of entropy is heat transfer divided by temperature. I want to introduce entropy in a way that I think is more historically appropriate way of how it was introduced. It ties back into the laws of thermodynamics. So with the first law of thermodynamics, we have a great intuition for where it comes from, conservation of energy. We have variables that enter into the law, change in internal energy, is heat transfer minus work done. And we have dynamical quantities that specify the state of the system that we can use to express all this. But I want us to start from the point where the second law of thermodynamics is still a bit mysterious. It's been specified in two ways in terms of the direction of heat flow, or spontaneous heat flow, and in terms of heat engine efficiency. These would correspond to the Clausius and Kelvin statements of the second law. I hope you come away with a feeling that you haven't gotten to fundamentally what the second law of thermodynamics is about. So what we will now describe is an attempt to get at that. And the place to start from is by coming up with a new state function, or what we'll call entropy. Sometimes the word state function gets thrown around, and it sounds all fancy, but it's really not all that special from what it sounds like. It's a function that describes state of a system. You have seen great many of these already, temperature, pressure, volume, the three variables in the ideal gas law. And you've seen how these play a role. Uh, temperature in particular plays an important role in specifying the internal energy. Now, there are dynamical quantities that are not state functions. Two good examples that you know of are heat and work. They are, hmm, I don't know if this is a word, a process function. When you want to describe heat transfer or work done, you need to have a process in mind, a particular path that the state of the system is taking through. So here's a reason we would want to start out with a new state function. Because it describes the state of a system, there are some things we can say about it without knowing what it is. And it's useful to be able to say something about it kind of restrict what it can be before we um, know a lot about it so that we can nail down exactly how to specify this new state function. So let me try to state these restrictions using Carnot cycle as the background. All right, you've seen this many times before. The gas starts at high pressure, low volume, expands to B, expands further to C, contracts to D, and contracts further to A, coming back to the starting point. Now, as you go through this process, when you look at the state functions that you know about, temperature, pressure, volume, you will notice that over one entire cycle, as you look at the change of the temperature, pressure, and volume, that the change of the state function, temperature, pressure, or volume, over a cycle, is equal to zero. This kind of makes intuitive sense. This is sort of what being on a cycle means. You come back to the same state, so same state must mean whatever state function you are using to describe it must come back to the same value. So, we are going to use this to look for a new state function that's going to be intimately connected to the second law of thermodynamics 
and it will be important in describing thermodynamical systems like the heat engine. Mm. So the kind of argument I'll go through in the next couple of minutes, I think it's uh, attributable to Clausius. But um, if I turn out to be wrong, I'm no historian. Never take your history lesson from a physicist. So let me go through that. <laughs> so over one cycle, there are some things that don't add up to zero. The net transfer or the network done, they are not zero over a cycle. In fact, the network done can be represented by this area inside the cycle. Now, I'm going to take a hint from the fact that these two non-state variables could be combined to describe a state variable. Maybe there is a way to do that, but in a bit of a different way. Now, when we are describing the Carnot engine, you know one important parameter is the efficiency. And when you look at the Carnot efficiency, something becomes a suggestive here. It's one minus low temperature over high temperature, or let me write it as one big fraction. The high temperature minus low temperature over high temperature. Now, this is for Carnot engine, but there is a more general expression for efficiency. You can start out with the definition of efficiency, heat engine efficiency that is, work done per heat transferred into it. Now, you may have seen this. Using the first law of thermodynamics, we can rewrite W, work done, in terms of heat transfers. It must be the difference of the heat input minus the waste heat. Now, just so there's no confusion here, this expression is for general heat engine. It's true for any heat engine. This expression up here, it is specifically for Carnot engine, which means for Carnot engine, these two expressions must be equal to each other. So that means, after a little bit of algebra that I'm not going to do in detail here, you get this result that for Carnot engine, the ratio of heat over temperature at the high temperature limit is equal to the ratio of uh, heat output over the low temperature. Just an algebraical truth. Let me rewrite this in a slightly more suggestive form. QH over TH minus QL over TL is equal to zero. If we look at each of these terms as describing some kind of difference or change that's occurring in this process, what this could be read as saying is that the total change is equal to zero. This is where we can suggest a tentative form for entropy. We could say each of these terms are changing the entropy of the engine or changing the new state function of the engine occurring at each of the steps. Apparently, it's somehow related to the heat transfer so as we look at this diagram, we can think of it this way. As the heat transfers into the system in isothermal expansion, there's an increase in the entropy equal to total heat transferred divided by the temperature. And as the heat transfers out of the engine in the isothermal contraction, there's once again an entropy change this time equal to minus QL for heat transferred out of the system divided by the temperature. And based on these expressions here, when you add them up for Carnot cycle, you get zero, which is what you would want for a state function. If you want to say that this entropy is a state function, it describes a state of the system, then over one cycle, it shouldn't change. 
So this is our starting point by asking the question, is this new quantity S, which is described by saying that change in S is related to heat transfer and temperature, is this a physically meaningful quantity? I know your textbook starts out by saying that it is a physically meaningful quantity, and I promised a slightly different take, so let me show that it is physically meaningful here. Now, the Carnot cycle is where we came up with the idea that this expression might be meaningful. So it doesn't make sense to test the significance of this in the Carnot cycle. So let me give you a different cycle in which we can look at the significance of this new expression. It can be any cycle, so let me make it easy for myself and use the very first toy cycle that we used when we were starting to talk about heat engine cycles, the rectangular cycle, isobaric expansion, isochoric cooling, another isobaric contraction, and then isochoric heating. Seems simple enough. And let's look at the entropy change as we go around in a cycle along this path and see if what we are guessing from all those suggestive expressions from Carnot cycle turns out to be true. All right, so the very first thing I should realize is that this cycle is actually not all that simple. Carnot cycle was simpler. The expression we want to test has temperature in it, and Carnot cycle was simple because it involved constant temperature processes, or when it wasn't constant, the heat transfer was zero, so I didn't have to worry about it. Um, for this isobaric and isochoric processes we will look at, neither of those are true. So what this means is we have to be ready to use calculus. So let me write down the form of the expression that we will be using. The infinitesimal change in entropy is going to be equal to small amount of heat transferred over the temperature. And we are going to add up all these changes along the line as our process moves along the line. We call that line integral. So, for example, if we want to figure out change in entropy as we go from A to B, this would be expressed as the line integral from A to B. And although eventually we will end up saying the path doesn't matter, since we don't know that yet, we'll say we are going to take the isobaric path and we integrate all these infinitesimal changes over along that line that gives us the finite change in the entropy. So we need to know how to do this integral. And a good place to start will be here. This is where all the familiar-ish looking variables are. Let me use the first law of thermodynamics to rewrite this a little bit. So we'll deal with a T later. And for dQ, small change in small amount of heat transferred. Glancing over at the first law of thermodynamics, this is what I can say. That small amount of heat transferred is going to be equal to small amount of internal energy change, moving W over, plus the small amount of work done. All right, I know how to express the internal energy. So for monatomic gas, just so that we have something specific to the work with, internal energy of gas is 3 halves nkt. And I also know how to express the infinitesimal work done. That would be pressure times infinitesimal volume change. So that means we can express this infinitesimal change in entropy this way as sum of two terms, 3 halves nk uh, dt over t. The one in the denominator is coming from the factor in front. That's the first term. And the second term from the infinitesimal work done. Pressure times dv over t. I feel much more comfortable with this expression because this is in terms of all the other state variables. Pressure, temperature, volume. 
I know how to handle that. I can use the ideal gas law when I need to. So uh, let's uh, work through this, see what we get. So we already got started working on the process A through B. So let's uh, finish that. The change of entropy is equal to, I guess I should write it out, integral A to B, 3 halves and K, all constants so far, dt over t. I think I know how to do this integral. Uh, treating t as my variable of integration, this is just going to give me natural log of t. Alright, keep going. Plus, I'm separating out the two integral terms. Still integral of a to b, pressure times dv over t. Um, so the variable of integration I've been given is the volume and it seems good enough to keep the volume. So I guess I should rewrite pressure and temperature. Glancing over at the ideal gas law, PV is equal to NKT. If I rewrite it for pressure over temperature, I get NK over V. All right, that seems like that's gonna give me what I want. Let me substitute that in, in place and we can do the integral. All right, I think we have everything. So let's uh, write it out. The first term is, I'm going to skip a few steps in the algebra, so um, 3 halves nk, that's the constant. And the antiderivative is natural log of t. My limits are temperature at point B and temperature at point A, so ln t b minus ln t a. To the logarithm algebra, I get natural log of t b over t a. Plus, I need to work out the second term, the constant nk, and the antiderivative of 1 over v is natural log of v. So I get the same result except in terms of volumes instead of the temperature. So this is the change in entropy going from A to B. We have three more of these, so let's get cracking. Okay, from B to C. So change in entropy going from B to C is going to be integral from b to c of, let me write it out, dE over t plus dW over t. And before actually writing out detailed expression, I can see that the work done is going to be zero. So let me just cross that out and save myself a little bit of writing. The first term still remains, and that's going to be integral from B to C, the change in the internal energy, 3 halves nk dt over the t in the denominator. Oh, I think I've done this before. So let me write down the same result, minding what the new variables are this time. This is equal to 3 halves nk natural log of the right variables, tc over tb. Okay, next step, C to D. Oh, I think we've done this exact one before, going from A to B. So I think I'm just going to write down the result, minding to replace the variables in a correct way. So let me illustrate that. Change in entropy is, is going to be what I derived earlier here. I can keep all the constants, 3 halves and k, and with the variables, I'm going to replace them with the correct one. So TB was the temperature at the ending point. So I should have the temperature at the ending point, TD, over the temperature at the starting point, TC. And the second term is the same thing. I can keep all the constants, NK, natural log of the volume at the ending point, VD, over VC. All right, if I did the copying correctly, that should be correct. Now the last process is D to A, and that's another copy of B to C. So if we are careful with the substitutions here, I think we can do the same thing, save a little bit of space. So 3 halves NK natural log of the ending temperature, TA, divided by the beginning temperature, TD. 
All right. So those are all changes of entropy in four distinct steps. And this is what we are hoping for. If the form of entropy we proposed is a state function and it's a correct one, then when we add up all these four together, it should add up to zero. So the question is, does it? Well, let's uh, add them up all together. I think I'm going to do some of the algebra verbally and save myself a little bit of writing and space. And that's going to be helped by the fact that it's a simple addition. So I have been eyeing at these two terms here. And I think when I add them, they're just going to cancel each other out because the volume at B and volume at A, the ratio, but also the actual values, is same as the volume at C over volume at D. So when I have natural log of Vd over Vc, all that really is minus natural log of Vb over Va. So that means when I add them together, these two terms will just uh, cancel each other out. So for the remaining four terms, they all have the same coefficient. So I think I can start by writing down the simplified expression as I write it down. The total change in entropy is factor out the common factor and what remains in the parentheses are natural log of Tb over Ta plus natural log of Tc over Tb plus natural log of Td over Tc plus the natural log of Ta over Td. Let's do a little bit of logarithm algebra in place. I hope you remember the logarithm algebra. Natural log of A plus natural log of B is equal to natural log of A times B. So since this is all summation here, we can imagine doing this algebraic operation that means I'm just going to put natural log over the whole thing and what is the sum becomes product. Okay, make sure I made the change correctly that I haven't actually changed the expression. All right, once we write it this way, you can see additional things that cancel out. This TB cancels out with this TB. This TC cancels out with this TC. This TD cancels out with this TD. TA cancels with TA the whole product just cancels out to 1. And natural log of 1 is 0. So this change of entropy over cycle does end up being 0, as we were hoping it would. Oh, I just realized that this went off the screen. Let me move them in. All right, I'll move it. So what this calculation is showing is this proposed expression for change of entropy or to be more precise, this uh, differential form that we are using, it satisfies the properties we would expect for state function. So this is the new state function that we are proposing that is going to be relevant in the context of second law of thermodynamics.